when we develop the Brahma Vihoras, attitudes of goodwill, compassion, empathetic joy, equanimity, we try to make them unlimited. In other words, we have goodwill for all beings, compassion for all, empathetic joy for all. And we have to learn how to apply thoughts of equanimity to all when necessary. The problem is that although our attitudes may be unlimited, our resources for actually helping people and improving the world, those are limited. This is why we have to have a clear set of priorities. What can we do? What can we not do? What things are worth doing and worth improving? What things are not? Because if you spread yourself too thin, you end up not accomplishing much at all. Or if you focus on solving the wrong problems, you end up regretting it later. Like sometimes we're told that the Buddha's main purpose in teaching was to put an end to all suffering. And yes, but he did that by focusing on one type of suffering, the suffering we cause ourselves. Through our own craving, through our own clinging, through our own ignorance. As for the suffering that comes from the three characteristics, that's something that can't be stopped. Those characteristics are still going to keep on manifesting themselves in the world. But the question is, do you have to suffer from them? Does your mind have to suffer from them? And the answer is no. So the emphasis is specifically on how you engage with the world that's causing suffering through your engagement through clinging and craving and ignorance. So that's what we work on as we meditate. As for helping other people, that's a matter of generosity. The Buddha set out duties only in terms of the Four Noble Truths. As for the duties to help other people, he didn't place a duty on anyone. He pointed out that certain things are skillful and certain things are unskillful in your engagement with other people. And it's important to note that difference. And the question that the Buddha says lies at the beginning of wisdom or discernment. What, when I do it, will lead to my long-term welfare and happiness? What is skillful? What is blameless? That's on the positive side. Then on the negative side, what, when I do it, will lead to my long-term harm and suffering? What is unskillful? What is blameworthy? Notice the terms. There's never a question, what is justice? The question is, what is skillful? As you look at the world around you, you see a lot of injustices, and you see a lot of mistreatment of people. Are we going to deal with it however, primarily as an injustice or something that's unskillful? Because our idea of justice has, is based on the idea that there's a beginning point to a story, and then you figure out who did what first, and then who did what second, and then at the end of the story then you figure out how things should be apportioned in terms of guilt or lack of guilt. But in the Buddha's teachings, there's no beginning. As he said, you could trace back, back, and back, and back. He said there, it's an inconceivable beginning. And we've been through this so many times, through so many in universes, that he said it's hard to meet someone who hasn't been your mother, or your father, or your brother, or your sister, or your son, or your daughter in all that time. The stories are very long. So if you're going to start apportioning blame, where do you start? There's a famous story of some dead doe. A young monk came to complain to one time that another monk had hit him. And some dead doe said, no, you hit him first. The monk said, no, no, he just came up and hit me over the head, and I hadn't done anything at all. He said, no, you hit him first. Back and forth like this for a while, and then the young monk got upset and went to see another senior monk to complain about some dead doe. So the other senior monk came and asked some dead doe what was up. And some dead doe said, well, obviously it's karma from some previous lifetime. He had hit the other monk first at some point. Of course, that might have been after the other monk hit the, other, the first monk first. So it goes back and forth, back and forth like this. So when you see mistreatment around you, the first question isn't, is this just or unjust? The question is, is that person behaving in a skillful way or an unskillful way? And what can I do behaving skillfully to put a stop to unskillful behavior? Now, there's some unskillful behavior you can't stop, and there's others that you can't. But that's the basic question. 
When is it skillful to interfere? When is it skillful to get involved? And sometimes it's clear and sometimes it's not. If you find you have the energy and the wherewithal and it's not too dangerous, you try to help. And if you see that it's not working, then you pull back. But a lot of this also has to do with your priorities. There are some in unskillful things happening in the world that really are worth banding together with other people, getting your energies together, and seeing if you can put a stop to it. But you have to do it in a skillful way. There's never a case in the Dharma where the ends justify the means. The means have to be good. In fact, it's all means. Where would you put the ends? You settle one issue and there's another issue, and you settle one issue, everybody dies and they get reborn and things start up again. The only real closure in the Buddhist teachings is nirvana. And that's a closure that each of us has to find within ourselves. We're not going to find closure out in the world, because the world just keeps on going again and again and again. And even at the beginning of the universe, it's not just one beginning. The Buddha has several ways of describing how the universe evolves. And you begin to realize there's no one person behind the evolution, no one plan behind the evolution. It's lots of individuals with lots of plans. And it's driven mainly by craving and ignorance. And that's what keeps it going. And as so long as you're trying to straighten it out, there, your attempts to straighten things out outside are dealing with craving and ignorance. Sometimes it's other people's craving and ignorance, sometimes it's yours. You have to be very careful about this. So this is why we work on the mind, because it's only in the mind that closure can come. Now remember, the main, main question is not questions of justice or injustice, it's skillful or unskillful. The Buddha never tries to justify, say, oppression by saying, well, the oppressed people deserved it. The word deserve also doesn't appear in the Buddhist teachings. So there are skillful actions with good results and unskillful actions with bad results. And we all have a big mix. So when you see somebody suffering, you don't know which part of their mix is showing and how much good stuff, say, is not showing. It gives the potential for you to help them. There are there cases where it's clear you can't help, like that squirrel I saw yesterday. Something was wrong with one of its legs and maybe two of its legs. But the closer I got to it to see what was wrong, the more it tried to struggle and struggle and get away. And I realized I was causing it a lot of suffering. So that's the kind of situation where you can't help. But other situations are not quite so easy to see. But remember the categories. It's not justice or injustice. It's skillful or unskillful. When there's unskillful behavior outside, at the very least, you don't condone it. You don't encourage people to engage in that behavior. And if you can think of some skillful way to stop it, you try. But your primary responsibility is what you're responsible for, i.e. your own choices. What you do and what you choose to tell other people to do. You want to make sure that those are skillful. If everybody looked after this one issue, the world would settle down. Our problem is we're trying to straighten everybody else out without straightening ourselves out first. So this is why we develop equanimity, because there are cases where we can't help. And as for the unclear cases where you might be able to help and might not be able to help, you have to have your priorities straight. What are the most important things? Where do you want to focus your energies? to make a difference in the world. In other words, where do you want to choose to be generous? As the Buddha said, with generosity there are no shoulds. He simply recommended give where you feel inspired, where you feel the gift would be well used. That applies not only to material gifts, but gifts of your time, gifts of your energy to improve things in the world. It's up to you to decide where you want to make your mark, who you want to help. Realizing that once you've chosen that, there are other things you're going to have to put aside. If your energies get too scattered, the Thai phrase is that you take a container of 
pepper sauce, and then you pour it into the sea. There's so much water in the sea that the pepper sauce makes no difference at all. So this is why we have to practice equanimity. We have good will for all, but we have to realize that we can be helpful only in certain circumstances, and you have to be very careful about when it's skillful and when it's not. Make sure that those are the terms of your analysis. Once you keep that point straight in your mind, then it clears up a lot of other difficulties. Now, our society doesn't think in these ways. Most people think in the terms of a story that has a beginning and an end, and it's clear to see who's right and who's wrong, although we argue over that. But everybody seems to have the idea there's a beginning point and an end point, and there's a plan to all this. And there's somebody up there who's got an idea about a just way to arrange things and gives us duties. But that's not in the Buddhist universe at all. There's no clear end, no clear beginning, and there's no one in charge. There's a chance as the world is swept away. You just want to make sure you don't get swept away with it. So you to be clear about what you're doing, clear about doing it skillfully. And that's how you get out. This is what the practice is all about, getting out. We try to leave some good things behind as we get out. In fact, you can't get out without leaving some good things behind. But sometimes the best gift you can give to other people is show them there is a way out. They can follow that way too. Try to keep that way open as much as you can through your thoughts and your words and your deeds. Look at the Buddha. He gave the greatest gift of all. He gave us the Dharma, showed us the path, and then he left. Now it's up to us to give that gift to ourselves and to the people around us as best we can.